All right, so we left off at the end of chapter six. Had quite a discussion last week about the math mm. of uh, yeah, mm. a lot. of the book. Mm-hmm. Okay, so chapter seven. Well, that's how Rufus's toothpaste business started, with Rufus figuring out that if he sold the toothpaste for only a penny more than it cost him to make, it cost him about two cents a tube, that he'd soon have millions of customers. He had to start in a small way, of course. When he started his business, Rufus packed the toothpaste in baby food jars. A baby food jar holds about as much as a big tube, and the jars didn't cost him anything. People with babies were glad to save jars for Rufus, as nobody had thought of a way of instantly recycling baby food jars before. When Rufus put a sign on the bulletin board at school saying he could use the jars, kids brought us hundreds of them. We sterilized and filled the jars. When we had about 500 jars, Rufus and I stuffed our saddlebags with as many as they would hold and rode our bikes around the neighborhood selling the toothpaste. We sold quite a few jars. At only three cents a jar, most people felt they could afford to give it a try, and most of the customers said it was a good toothpaste. So that means, so that means the rest of them said they don't like it. So, so what do you mean by that here? What I mean by that is... I'm getting your napkins while you're talking. Yeah. It says that he bar- he, most of them said they liked it. Then if he said most of them, doesn't mean all of them liked it. Okay, so you're thinking that only part of the people bought? Why do you think the people um, that purchased the toothpaste of him, why did they do it? According to what the text says. They wanted to try it out since it was cheap. Okay. Go ahead. Let's and maybe so when Ollie said that, that, maybe, um, maybe, like, they want, they've been asking them, can they have free samples? And then if they taste good, they use them and then buy it. Does the text say that they gave out free samples? No. No, but it might. So you're thinking they could have given samples? That would yeah. be a good idea, like, if ice cream. Yeah, true. Ice cream. What I did last time was... It's a good thing to do that. It's, it's like ice cream. Sometimes a lot of people, when they try it, they'll test out if it's good or bad. If it's bad, they won't buy that product. If it's good, then, yeah, they will. Okay, so the te- let me see, show you what the text said. So based on what you're saying is that if they think it's good, then they'll try it. So it says, we sold quite a few jars. At only three cents a jar, most people felt they could afford to give it a try. What do you think that means, they could afford to give it a try? They- like to try to do it. I actually don't know how to put it in a way. I'm it means that they have the money to try to pay for it to try it out. Okay. Um. Yeah, like what Ollie said. I'd like to add to that. Um, like. When if since they have enough money to buy it, it also means um that they'll try it and then like they use it and then if it doesn't taste good, they might say like they might tell the person that they might tell the person if they could they could return it to the person and get their money back or. So for three cents, is that very much money? No. no. Uh, for example, my mom and dad sell authentics, and they'll let them have like a fee sample to see how they like it, and then they'll buy it. But if they, but if something goes wrong with it, they have like to get their money back. And like what Daniel said. Okay. Okay. Still, I could not see how Rufus was going to get rich on three cent toothpaste unless millions of people knew about it. Then I had this idea about how we would get some free advertising. Everybody in Cleveland watches a program called The Joe Smiley Show. On the show, Joe interviews people who have interesting hobbies. I wrote Joe Smiley a letter telling him I had this friend who had a hobby of making toothpaste and could make about a two-year supply for the price of one tube. And Joe Smiley called up Rufus to ask if he would be on the show. Rufus was very good on the show. 
Though I was afraid that he never would get around to talking about the toothpaste. I was worried because when Joe Smiley asked Rufus how he had learned to make to toothpaste, Rufus started telling him about his grandmother Mayflower. Hmm. He told not only about the scrapbook paste, but about how his grandma Mayflower had made her own furnace out of two 100-gallon oil barrels. Joe Smiley was so interested in that furnace that it was hard to get him off the subject of Rufus's grandmother. Rufus told about his grandmother taming raccoons, woodchucks, mice, chipmunks, and catbirds, and of course about her brushing her teeth with plain baking soda. But the story I liked best was about his grandmother's name. It seems Mayflower was his grandmother's whole name. She didn't have any last name till she got married. Then she took her husband's name, which was Proctor, and was known as Mrs. Mayflower Proctor. But Rufus's grandmother never did like the name Proctor because it was a slave name. Rufus explained that back when there were slaves, a black man was sometimes called by the name of the white family who owned him. So when Mayflower's husband died, she dropped the Proctor part of her name, and she and her children went back to being Mayflowers. Then Social Security came along and said she had to have a first name and a last name on her Social Security card. But rather than let the government put her down with a slave name, Mrs. Mayflower wrote the Social Security people and signed herself Mrs. Mayflower with a space between the May and the flower. I love that story. In fact, I'm seriously thinking about changing my name to Mac Kinstry, as I don't care too much for Catherine. Mac sounds like a boy's name, and boys' names usually sound a lot more forceful than girls' names to me. What do you think about that? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if I agree with that. I... I agree and kind of disagree at the same time because some it depends what the name is if it's better like Andrew yeah Josie and Joseph um like it actually de definitely depends on which um name it is I agree with Ollie because for my name my name is Daniel and there's like couple like, there's a Spanish one, a girl one, and the boy one. There's Daniel, Daniela, and then Danielita. Okay. Those are all three of Daniels. Anybody else want to say something? Wait, I actually have a question. Is there anybody else in the world other than named Michael? Because I don't know anybody. I named Michael? Na yep. There's lots of Michaels. Hmm. Like Michael Jackson, that's the only person Michael I know, but he's Jackson, dead. Michael D. Bose, Michael um, Jordan. Yeah. Mar Michael. Why Michael. were you thinking about the name Michael? I don't know. I just haven't heard it, like, oh. forever. Okay. But I'm getting off the subject of toothpaste, just as Rufus did on the Joe Smiley show. You wouldn't think all that stuff about Rufus's grandmother would sell toothpaste. But then, as my father pointed out, you wouldn't think Rufus's way of advertising the toothpaste would sell toothpaste either. Joe Smiley is the kind of guy who, always, who is always saying things are the greatest thing you ever heard of or the most fantastic. If a girl comes on his show in a pink coat that Joe thinks is attractive, he'll say, that's the most fantastic coat. There's nothing that special about the coat. He just means it's nice. What I mean is he exaggerates. And everybody Joe has on his show is one of the greatest people you ever met or has done the most fantastic thing. So when Joe does get to Rufus's toothpaste, he naturally gives it this big buildup, which is what I was counting on. And what does Rufus do? The conversation went something like this. Joe, now Rufus, this fantastic toothpaste you make, I suppose it has a special secret formula. Rufus. No, it's made out of stuff anybody can buy for a few cents and mix up at home in a few minutes. Joe. Fantastic. And of course it's much better than the kind you buy at the store. Rufus. I don't know about that, but it tastes pretty good and for about two cents you can make as much as you can get in a 79 cent tube. Fantastic. And where can people get some of this great toothpaste? Rufus. If you live in East Cleveland, I'll deliver it to them on my bike. Three ounces cost three cents. It costs me two cents to make, and I make a one cent profit. If anyone outside East Cleveland wants some, I'll have to charge three cents plus postage. What does he mean when he says plus postage? Mm -hmm. What do you think? Plus tax. No, postage is not tax. Um...
I think extra money for when he goes. So it says, if anyone outside East Cleveland wants some, I'll have to charge three cents plus postage. Oh, because I, I know think what I think no one. I know. What, I think what it means, like you know, when you buy something off Amazon and it uh -huh. needs to get shipped to your house, yes. you need to pay for it to get shipped. Yes. But like postage is when you have a big box, like say you're a mail truck deliverer. There's stamps mm -hmm. that no, so you have to pay three cents and then it get posted, so it gets stamped and then it delivers. Exactly. It. So it's the it's the um, money that you pay the mail um, delivery carrier to um, to put stamps on it. Jackson, what Ollie said. What? So what Ollie said. With Ollie? Okay. Fantastic, Joe. Fantastic. And what do you call this marvelous new product? Rufus. Toothpaste. Joe. Just toothpaste? It doesn't have a name like Sparkle or Shine or Sensation or White Lightning or Personality Plus? Rufus. No. It's just plain toothpaste. It doesn't do anything sensational such as improve your smile or your personality. It just keeps your teeth clean. Who would have thought that telling people toothpaste wait, wait, wait. wouldn't do one thing for their personalities would sell toothpaste? What were you thinking, Ollie? I disagree with Rufus because when he said improves your smile, your teeth could be rotten and it'll make it like a nasty oh, smile, yeah. but when you brush your teeth, it'll make it a clean smile. Oh, okay. Some of the toothpaste that I use is okay, but some of the others don't really work that well. They work bad, kind of. So why do you think Kate is saying that, um, that who would have thought you could sell toothpaste by saying that the toothpaste isn't anything special? Why was she saying that? I actually don't know what that means. Oh, so she whoa, said, who would have again? thought that telling people toothpaste didn't, wouldn't do one thing for their personalities would sell toothpaste? That was her question. Oh, <laughs> she's like, when she means that, she means like, why you why you won't add some special like, um, like the water, like how it makes a big name right here on the on the water bottle, and it brings like it makes sense because it says since 1964, 100 natural Florida spring water. So does that make me want to buy that product? Yeah, because it's natural spring water. Okay, so so what did Kate think that maybe Rufus should have done with his toothpaste? What she thought he could have done with his toothpaste is, like, put more pizzazz. Okay. Like, <laughs> yeah. like magic. Yeah. And also when there's old products like this water, wait, what, you, what is it? 1961. Um, like, since it's so old and mostly people get it, like say say there's um a kind of juice that, that everyone buys and is really popular that might make you want to buy it okay. and since it's so old maybe back in the day people used to buy it and it was popular and then from this day it's still popular so that makes you want to buy it so go ahead Jackson so what Daniel said is kind of like my mom and dad they always keep on getting a bunch of things back into their offices. So pretty much like what Daniel said. So using having a special name for it you think helps to sell uh, it better? No, 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 not about the name. It's mostly about the product or how good it uses. Okay. Who would have okay, so who would have thought that telling people toothpaste wouldn't do one thing for their personalities would sell toothpaste? But three days after Rufus was on the Joe Smiley show, he got 689 orders for toothpaste. Ooh. One came all the way from Venice, California, from a man who happened to be telephoning his daughter while she was watching the show in Cleveland. The daughter said, there's a kid here who's selling toothpaste for three cents a jar, and her father ordered three dozen jars. Fantastic. How much would three dozen jars be? Nine cents. Three dozen. No way. How much is in one dozen? Um, Twelve. Twelve, so what would three dozen be? <gasps> oh, oh, three. three. All you gotta do is lose twelve. All you gotta do is twelve times three. Okay, thank you. 
I already got those 12 times, so what would 12 times 3 be? 37? No way. Wait, 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 that's what I'm saying. Why is it not following you? Wait. So that's 24. Mm-hmm. 36. 36, yes. Okay. So he bought 36 jars. Why do you think he bought 36 jars? To maintain his toothpaste, like, he said, one jar makes a big, like, fills in a big toothpaste. So, so he got 36 jars. He got 36 jars because he has... He has tubes that he can fill up, like, if he makes... Okay, wait, let's go back to what this says. This is a man whose daughter was watching the show, and the daughter told the man about the toothpaste, and the man bought three dozen jars of Oh, to give it to him. Why do you think the man bought three dozen jars? I think, I know. I think he wanted to make his own toothpaste. No. Or give it to Rufus. Well, if he's buying it from Rufus, would he be giving it to Rufus? Oh, no. All right. So Wait, he bought it from Rufus? Yeah, let's go back and read. One, she, he, Rufus got 689 orders for toothpaste. One came all the way from Venice, California, from a man who happened to be telephoning his daughter while she was watching the show in Cleveland. The daughter said, there's a kid here who's selling toothpaste for three cents a jar, and her father ordered three dozen jars. Oh, what I know why. Why do you think he ordered He those? ordered three dozen of them because... So, um, like, if it's if it's only three cents, he can he can just keep using them instead of wasting his money that time. Yeah, so that's pretty cheap, isn't it? Mm -hmm. um, Did you want to add to that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. No, I got it. Um. This is something that I said before, uh, like a week ago or something. Um. Like I said, since he's selling it for three or two cents, he people buy it because it's so cheap. You could buy like a million portions. I think he probably buying thirty six jars, so he could sell it and make money. Well, do, well, that's a thought. Is there any evidence in the text to tell us that? No, no, no. Page thirty four. Well, on page thirty four. Let me see. Nope. But why would that be a good inference? Oh, yeah. I have a question, but. Why would that be a good inference? Because instead of instead of him, well, it's like how I said last time a quiz quiz trade. Like he can, how much money he got, he can he can ask like he can say, "Do you want jars?" And if somebody says, "Do you I want three that dozen of them?" He can get three dozen and charge more than it's actually worth. Okay, and he's only charging, how much profit is he making off each jar, according to what the text says? Three cents. Is he making three cents? He's charging three cents. How much is he making off of that three cents? Thirty, no, three dozen. No, no, for one jar, it's three cents. How much does Rufus make off that one jar? It's one not, tube of toothpaste. Let's go back to page 33, because it tells us. Daniel, please don't do that. Sorry. All right, but we're in the middle of our book discussion, not throwing, uh, flipping, Garbage. Uh, flipping grape juice. In the middle. Grape juice. So go back to page 33. Everybody go back there. You included. Go back to page 33. Uh -huh. And somewhere on that page, it tells us how much he made off of one jar of toothpaste. See if you can find that. Oh, I know. I know it's on... It's on page 33. Put your thumb up when you have it. Oh, I got it. I got it. Sorry, Jinx. All right, wait for you. I said I got it. And I said it. All right, so wait quietly. You didn't put your thumbs up, though. Wait quietly. Where is it? Three yards. I have a question though. Hold on. Let them find it. It's on page 33. It's on page 33. 
All right, go ahead and share with us, Francisco, and let's see if it you, says, your classmates agree. Oh, it says, if they lived in the East Cleveland and all Cleveland, I'll deliver it to them on my bike. Three ounces cost three cents. It costs me two cents to make, and I make a one a one cent profit. 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 All right. So, how much then is he making off of one bottle of one jar of toothpaste? Two it doesn't say two cents there. No, wait, it, says, it says it costs me two cents to make, and I make a one cent profit. So, how much does he make? Three cents. No, because one cent because uh, it costs two cents to make it um and he gets a one and he's profit. charging three well, cents so that means he makes only one more cent he yeah. makes one cent on every single jar so if he sold 36 jars to that man cents. how much would he make he will make 36 cents anyway my question was what would happen if they raised the price like to one dollar or two. What do you think would happen? He will get more profit. Wait. than... Ooh. He can. He will get more. Hold on. Let Ollie go, and then you can do it. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. He will get a more profit than he usually get because he gets one cent. And it, wait, how much dollars you said? As a he said if he raised it to a dollar. To a dollar. He will get a hundred. Wait. So Wait, if no. it cost two cents to make oh, it, and he raised two it cents. to a dollar, how much would he make? <gasps> He'll get 98 okay. some more cents. So, he would make more money, right? Yeah. So what were you thinking, um, Francisco, and then we'll let Daniel go? I would have think that um, if he was selling it for a dollar, and... um. And he usually makes two cents. I would think he probably make. Um, but you said, no, I'm not asking you how much. You said you thought something would happen if he raised the price. What did you say? Oh yeah, I think um, he will get less customers. Yeah, I was. Because um, he's raising the money, and he in um two in cents, like two cents is not even yeah, that bad. But dollar is way more more than um two cents. Daniel wanted to weigh in I agree with Francisco because if he raises it up more than a dollar or a dollar by itself, pe people won't buy it as much. They'll probably buy like five, one, because if they buy like three... Do you remember how much it said in the book that toothpaste was going for at this time? 79 cents. 79 cents. So... So if you raised it to a dollar, then what would happen? Oh, then they you have less you. people. Yeah. Wait, you. Uh... Thank you. <laughs> yeah. You um. That's two. Oh, snap. this is twenty one more dollar. I mean cents than it's actually worth. So that means they will have less customers. Okay. All right. We, we've got to stop. Twenty one. So I want you. To make sure that you have read eight, listen, read chapters eight and nine for tomorrow, okay, okay and be ready to discuss. All right, nice job.